Right, uh, you're watching TVC Breakfast. It's time for us to look at the headlines across Nigerian newspapers. And I have with me my regulars to help make sense of all of the <coughs> issues that are on the papers today. I have Jide Ologun here in the studio. Jide, good morning. Good, good to morning, see you. Good morning, Mike. Good. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, I also have uh, Tunji Abdulhamid here. Uh, Tunji, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Great. Now, let's uh, start with uh, this day, this day newspaper. This day newspaper says... Buhari defers subsidy removal to incoming government. Buhari defers subsidy removal to incoming government. Seeks 18-month suspension to send PIB, PIA amendment to National Assembly. Federal government says decision has nothing to do with 2023 elections. All right. And IMF insists on end one's uh, funds channel to health, social development, and <coughs> other things. All right. That's uh, this day newspaper. From there, let's go to Blueprint. The Blueprint newspaper says on Petroleum Industry Act, Buhari shifts fuel subsidy removal to successor July 2023 to seek National Assembly approval. NLC suspends planned nationwide strike. Right, that's Blueprint. This Nigeria is next and is focusing on subsidy storm. Federal government shifts removal date by 24 months. And denies fear of 2023 election behind decision. Say no fuel increment for now. Uh, Labour suspends January 27 nationwide protests. Okay, that's uh, this Nigeria. Daily Trust. Petrol subsidy retained for political reasons. Experts are saying this. And PIA can't be implemented now. Wow. It's a plot to finance 2023 election. That's the PDP saying that from that quotation there. You turn not enough. Fix refineries, reduce price. NLC is telling government on this. All right, that's daily, daily trust. Nigeria Tribune now says that to sustain subsidy, federal government proposes 18 month delay for PIA. It says National Assembly will amend PIA to reflect new position. And it's a ploy by APC to fund 2023 polls. That's the PDP saying this. It says ruling party failed to fulfill promise to build refineries. <coughs> Experts divided over suspension or removal. A labor suspends a planned nationwide uh, strike. Okay. From there, let's go to the leadership newspaper. Leadership uh, says PMB booby traps. Uh, booby traps next president extends PIA implementation by 18 months. Uh, PMB Booby Traps next president extends PIA implementation by 18 months. Okay, that's what the leadership has. The Guardian newspaper <coughs> says a stay of fuel subsidy of fuel subsidy. That's uh, the headline. The government will borrow more as states struggle to survive. OPS warns. That's uh, OPS is the organized private sector. Buhari suspends PIA by 18 months. NLC shelves protests. It says no law is cast in stone. Okay. Uh, Aramu urges sustenance of uh, negotiations and panic buying as petrol queues return to Abuja. That's uh, the Guardian newspaper. Now, now, News Direct, Nigeria News Direct is next. Electoral Act Amendment Bill, Senate reps approve consensus for political parties. Parties to secure written consent on voluntary withdrawal endorsement from all aspirants. Okay, parties to secure written consent on voluntary withdrawal endorsement from all aspirants. Okay, these are all issues around the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Of course, we'll be talking about this too as we get along. From there, let's go to Daily Independent Electoral Act Amendment Bill. National Assembly harmonizes position on consensus candidacy, says parties must get written consent of other aspirants. Okay. From there, let's go to uh, Business Day. Nigeria faces higher budget deficit on revived subsidy. Seeks to amend the PIA. That's what the Business Day has. A national economy <coughs> says uh, agriculture, manufacturing, ICT to drive Nigeria's GDP in 2022. As the NESG projects, 3.2% uh, growth for economy. So agriculture, manufacturing, and ICT uh, 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 tip to drive GDP of Nigeria in 2022. Okay, let's uh, get into 
the matter now. And, uh, all right, we'll be talking about two things, but let's begin with the subsidy <coughs> removal. The, 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 you know, this has been on headlines, headlines, headlines for several days now. Uh, Tribune says to sustain subsidy, federal government proposes 18 months delay for PIA. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daily Trust says petrol, uh, petrol subsidy retained for political reasons and expert is saying that. Right, I'm going to start with uh, Tunji here. Uh, this subsidy removal, uh, we played a report earlier where the minister was saying that after due <coughs> consultation, after a lot of meetings, after, con you know, and all of that, we're still back just exactly where we have been. So the point there is, what is the essence of all of the consultations that were made and all the sleepless nights, all the meetings, all the, you know, and all of that? From your perspective, what, what are you making of this? Consultation with who? Uh, with stakeholders. We, yeah. Who are the stakeholders? In fact, the Minister of State who are the used the word stakeholders. Well, who are those consulted? Mm. I'm not aware of any consultation. No, I'm not supposed to be aware in any way. Okay. Yeah, I'm supposed to also be aware. But maybe we are the, the, who are not the only thing I know, the only discussion I know was engagement by Labour. And Labour, is that, that was not consultation. That was a, uh, an attempt to prevent Labour from going to strike. The Labour was, uh, was asking that, look, if we don't do this, we will go on strike. And that was what... Uh, uh, and, uh, 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 the, 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 the discussion mm. that so I don't see any consultation. This consultation ought to have been done before you even think of uh, talking about uh, removing the removal of subsidy. Uh, you see, we, we place the card before the, the us in this country, and that's why we are having what we are having today. You, uh, in any way, I'm not surprised because I know this subsidy of thing is just is just a ruse, as far as I'm concerned. You because think so? yes, I, 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 I know because uh, for years we have been told. They are sub were subsidized. No, the, even this government denied that there was subsidy. Mm -hmm. At the time, they said they were doing on the recovery. Mm -hmm. And I remember at that time that the former Senate President Saraki raised the alarm that, look, the, 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 this is a scam because uh, we have been told that we are, we are, we are, we are consuming uh, 50 liters of uh, mm -hmm. uh, fuel a day. And they said, no, it can't be correct. And then they were spending over 2 point something billion. About 40, 50 million. As, 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 as subsidy. Yeah. And uh, we, we are not, we are, who are, who, how much has been paid as subsidy? How many liters of, 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 of what's it called? Or of, 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 are we refining? How, how, this, this are issue that we don't even know. Nobody can ascertain that this is the number of uh, crew that we are refining every day. Or we are refining every month. Or these are the number of, this is what their month being, being used to subsidize them. Mm. Uh, anyway, because this government said, uh, they are not uh, they are not uh, uh, doing subsidy. They were doing uh, under recovery, but they came to reali the reality and confirmed now that there is subsidy. And then, uh, unfortunately, they, they are not able to do anything. It, to me, is a failure on the part of the government for not fulfilling its promise because uh, the president of uh, uh, of the country, remember the Buhari, mm. promised that they would do uh, a refinery at least one per year. And today, I've not seen any. And as it is today, I'm not sure there will be mm. anyone mm. that they will, they, will, they will do. And until these foundations are laid. Until we have a working refinery, we did, there cannot be any removal of subsidy. Who, who, who will remove subsidy? Who, who's, going to, who's going to bear the brunt? You know, the, we have a, a situation whereby our government, they will look at a, a, a way of passing their responsibility to the masses, rather than attack the responsibility. You know, we, we are related to, to continue with subsidy. It's a, it's a decision that we have taken, those in government. They've related to say, let's continue with subsidy, because if you don't plan on how to have a, refinery, a working refinery, there is no way we will not continue to pay subsidy because there is no way, even that 18 months, are you telling me the economy will have uh, be better at that time? So there is no, there won't be any available time to, 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 to implement this uh, uh, right. uh, subsidy of 18, okay. as far as I'm now, concerned. Yeah, now G the, 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 uh, one of the riders on Daily Trust says that PIA cannot be implemented now and he was quoting uh, the government uh, from what government is saying. So shifting all of this to some time uh, uh, next year. But the point there is consultations were also made. A lot of things were considered. A lot of, and it was, it was, it was like a jamboree uh, when the PIA was eventually signed. It was like history being made. So when we hear that uh, PIA cannot be implemented now, what do you make of all of these? A wise man said that it's better to measure 10 times hmm. and cut once hmm. than to measure once and caught 10 times. So I believe we are cutting 10 times now because the argument now is that the subsidy should have been removed in February by virtue of the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act. Now it has to be suspended. And I want us to look at the implications of this on the economy. The claim now is that Nigerians consume about 19.5 
you know, uh, I think uh, a million, billion mm -hmm. liters of petroleum product annually. Mm -hmm. And that brings the subsidy to about 4.6 trillion naira. And that is why the argument is that the reasonable price should be 403 naira per liter, which is the landing cost. And if you leave it where it is now, the government is subsidizing with about 241 mm -hmm. naira. So the implication is that 4.6 trillion naira is going into subsidy. And that is huge for a nation that depends on borrowing. And that brings us to what a wise governance approach should have delivered on the table. This is like the seventh year of this regime. What have we done with our refineries? Because it does not make economic sense for you to have raw materials and export your raw materials to a foreign nation, create business, create jobs for them, lose some of the byproducts, and you bring it back to your nationals at a premium. And that is where we are today. And when you look at the value chain of the oil and gas, the NNPC was established on April 1, 1977, 45 years ago. Mm. And recently, NNPC was even warning that there may be zero remittance to the Federation account. Mm -hmm. So it's like, rather than making progress, like, uh, like it, it's been done in Saudi Arabia, in America, and some other countries of the world, we are regressing. You see, and you look at one other pressing issue now. We are sustaining this nation now on borrowing. The total indebtedness of Nigeria around March 2015 was about 12.12 trillion naira. Today, it's about 39 trillion naira. And that's why people are concerned. So the, 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 the trajectory that, okay, we are looking at the reality of the economy, considering the plight of the people. Who are the people? The people have already been thrown into a serious plight. So would it have made any difference, for instance, if the four refineries, state-owned refineries, are functioning well? Mm -hmm. And we have built about 20 more modular refineries. So we don't lose that foreign exchange to Europe and other countries where these products are refined and brought back because when you study subsidy in economics there are two aspects of subsidy you have the cost subsidy you have the consumption subsidy so here we are now dealing with the consumption subsidy and what i said earlier is based on the fact that it is expected a crude uh, oil price will remain around 85 dollars in the global environment and we have said this that even on your phone you can learn how to excel when adam smith was writing on the wealth of nation in 1776 his focus was not on poverty his focus was on creating wealth all right so what is wrong with us that we have enormous resources and we are so lazy to maximize them and the government is not addressing this the government is not addressing this so whether it's the national assembly or whatever why don't we build capacity do you know when we when we export this crude oil and we refine you have the 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 products the pms and all the mm -hmm. products mm -hmm. you have the petrochemical products also that we don't even benefit from you see i read early in 2015 uh, no uh, 2015 2016 when the former minister of state for petroleum ibe kachuku was saying nnpc we go into uh, electricity mm -hmm. Several promises. Yeah, so many things. Several promises. And now 18 months. But it's good. <clears throat> we are already speaking to the next leadership that there is a difference between transformational leadership and transactional leadership. Mm. And when you compare notes, Nigeria discovered oil in commercial quantity in 1965. Here we are today. The UAE discovered oil in 1958 and translated the desert of the UAE to paradise. And, you know, the, the nation is a continuum. So if we cannot find the release of prosperity right now, mm. definitely as we go ahead, there will be a change of narrative. All so right. it, it's a serious matter for mm. us. It's just about wise governance approach. And all that right. is all we need. It's okay. Well, the, the, the world, like we said in our previous discussion, the world is moving on mm. uh, to other things now. So... Nigeria spending all the time 
going back and forth and going round and round fossil fuel to be not to be should we expand should we not expand should we subsidize should we not subsidize the world is moving up to something else away from uh, fossil fuel away from even the fuel we're talking about uh, renewable energy now let's talk about uh, another issue here the electoral act amendment uh, bill you know uh, the national assembly the uh, house of reps and senate have harmonized uh, you know some of the areas and if you look at daily independent it, it says national assembly harmonizes position on consensus uh, candidacy it says parties must get written consent of other aspirants if we're going to use the if they're going to go the way of uh, consensus and uh, uh, this is uh, still one of those issues that nigerians i uh, say uh, after due consultation this is it you know uh Tunji, Talk to us from this window, because when it is said that due consultation is being made, people are meeting, a lot of committees here and there, brainstorming, and, all, and, then, and then at the end of all of that brainstorming, this is what the outcome is. When, when you talk about consultation in Nigerian politics, hmm. as it is today, particularly in the National Assembly, the consultation is within themselves, not within the people. You know, they are representing people. I've never seen... My, 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 my representative from the House of Rep, particularly this uh, regime, come to our constituency and say, this is a, what, is, what is on ground? What is your position? I've never seen that. It's not even available at the, at the National Assembly, so you cannot even do that. So what I'm saying is that, look, most of these people take decisions based on their personal interest and then say, this is what my people are, are saying. Mm -hmm. They don't consult people. They don't consult those who put them there. They take decisions based on what their party is talking about, what the interest of the party, the interest of the leaders, the interest of uh, their personal interest. So they should not talk about consultation. They, nobody has been consulted as, as, far as, I'm, as, as far as my own constituency is concerned. I, there is no consultation in my own constituency. So he cannot tell me I, after the consultation of uh, his constituency. He's taking decision based on his own personal interest, not, not me. So what I'm saying is that, look, you see, when you don't do the right thing, this is where you find yourself. It has been said before now, when they, they initially they fight the, the electoral bill, talking about direct primary or whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. and people, particularly member of the PDP, and the, I remember them uh, saying, questioning the issue of a direct primary, and they were seeing it as, what is wrong with you? What, you don't do what a good election? Now, today, what has happened? You see, if you don't do the right thing, you will come back and do, the, and do what... The, the, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not say, I'm not I'm not going to say this, ele this, this is a... a we have, we have what the, the, the electoral bill will come to, to pass, mm -hmm. as, far as, I'm, as far as this is concerned, because this consensus of a team may be another issue that will, that will be used to say, look, he cannot go. No, I know the president mentioned the consensus when he was granting interview with uh, uh, Okinbaloye or something. Talk about issue of concession. Maybe it's a skip of talk. I don't know. So that's why they picked their, the, the consensus uh, uh, part of it and put it there. Because in the letter, there, there was no concession mentioned in, the, in that letter sent to the National Assembly. It was direct and indirect. Mm -hmm. But now, because he, he was granting interview and then he mentioned the consensus, probably they, they got that from that place. Mm -hmm. And then now, they are putting conditions that the, part, the aspirant must uh, do and that. That, can, that may be another issue because it's going to be a difficult issue to achieve that con that, 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 that consensus. Mm -hmm. so probably the party will decide which. Thank God they have options: one, two, three, mm -hmm. direct, indirect, and consensus. Mm -hmm. But I am I'm sure that look, the, if the president is truly interested in having a proper electoral bill that will regulate, because this issue of a direct or indirect is not the major issue as far as I'm concerned. The major issue is electronic electronic transfer of a. Uh, transmission of uh, what's it called results. Result. So if, if we should not allow this uh, direct indirect or whatever to negate mm -hmm. that uh, purpose, I will expect the president to sign and even and allow the party to determine whether it's going to be direct, indirect, or consensus in okay. line with what he said. He said like, this is democracy as far as I'm concerned in that regard. Uh, exactly. All right. Now, Jide, the point there is when it comes to the issue of all right, the three of us, if we are all uh, aspirants and we contested and we've decided, okay. Uh, you should, uh, or the party in their in their wisdom decides. Okay, we give you the 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 slot. How easy would it be if the rest candidates are not happy with that? You know, with the arrangement, they don't have a choice because the party is supreme, but they are not comfortable with it. How easy would it be to? gets the endorsement of the other aspirants how challenging would this be implementing it because it looks just like an ideal situation but in practical terms you uh, use the tool of lobbying you know in public relations you lobby mm. you know and then um, you talk to one another and within the parties of course do the needful you which you understand <laughs> okay 
my friend, you, you, you are interested in this office. Mm. For example, how much have you spent? You know, what have you given to your supporters? Okay, can I give you back your money? Or can we negotiate? You know, so there is always room for the internal mm. democracy. And I, I believe if we are introducing the clause that, okay, now procure written consent to this consensus, that it means we may minimize the litigations that we have in court. So we yeah, have to but, look but, at but there is also the aspect of it where, like, you, you just brought out the, the need for now. In a situation where other aspirants are giving conditions, wouldn't it be like it's going to be a business now? Because if you want my endorsement and it's part are of you the now, criteria... Are you saying so it's, you have not, to it's not business already? Uh, more business. Uh, but you see, if you look at the, if I look at, look at the conditions, mm -hmm. it will not if there's if there's disagreement regarding the, the, the you not not bring it, not submitting your letter of uh, what's it called confirmation or mm -hmm. whatever, the, you go to for that direct or indirect. That will not be the hand. It's so, it's, you are not, you're not going to be forced mm. because but I, I, my, my worry is that look, but our the, problem is point, not But at the point where the party has decided for this one, let's go consensus way. The moment that has been adopted and is being conducted, you can't come back again and say, okay, no, 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 uh, for direct or indirect, direct family, or indirect. As, as, as the case may be by the party, so they will have to go there. That will not be the end. But the issue is that look, it happened last year. The APC adopted concession uh, 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 options, and they will say that look, if one person disagrees, then uh, the the the, the, the concession will not hold. What do we see? Hmm. It, they have to come contrary to, to, to it, and it 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 it, 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 it gets through. So the the point is that look, what I'm trying to say is that our problem is not the law; hmm. it's how we uh, enforce and implement the law. How are we going to? Are we going to? Align with our with, with the law. Are we going to act in line with the law? Are we going to submit ourselves to the law and not whims and purpose of our interests? You, you, you're day by point. So the point is not about the law. So I, I like I said again, the president should go ahead and sign this uh, uh, law in the interest of. Let's forget about this issue of directing that how it will be implemented. Let let the party decide that. Let them, let them, let it be their edict. It is the edict of the party to determine whether that direct or indirect or indirect, indirect crisis in whatever method they, they, they adopt. It doesn't really a problem. But, but let's, you, let's, you, let's you realize there is another clause being introduced, mm. which is that only a contestant at the primaries can contest where a party present, for example, fraudulent certificate, mm. which was not the case, or which is currently not the case. And the moment you are meant that, you are knocking off accountability. Mm. Recall that in the most recent election in Bayelsa State, in fact, the governor elect was already rehearsing mm -hmm. for the inauguration. Yeah, before well, the court to the said no you know, that morning for your team presenting a fake a certificate, you cannot clinch to that victory. And now we are saying the Nigerians cannot question questionable presentations. And I think we are just moving away from the ideal democracy that has accountability as a very strong pillar. And the National Assembly should please be awake to these realities, except we are saying that quite a number of them cannot defend their credentials. Because you must, when, when we talk about transparency, talk about integrity, it's not just in the expression, it's in the action. Mm. So we need to upscale our you know, quality of electoral processes okay all right we have to leave you here now uh we we just hope let's see how these things pan out eventually Gideon logun thank you so much for coming on the program thank you thank and you. god bless nigeria and, uh, Tunji Abdul thank you for coming as well thank you thank you, thank you. great you.